Welcome back to Dow of Twang. I'm Dave. So we've got us a, a D, kind of a, a D pedaling type of thing. This is a great example of a um, kind of a modal method of composition for a rock chord riff. Okay, it um, it it always has this D ringing out. Uh, I, I don't really worry about the the high. E string here on this D chord, it's more like a that sort of thing. So then when you if you just kind of you know strum it out, it okay. Um, and it's just it's just cool. It's just it's a really rich, you know, uh, sound and the guitar just seems to be made for the to do that with in the key of D and you and you there's a lot of classic songs that feature that um, so it's a great one to jam over there's no other chords or anything in that that intro that I just played it's just that riff um, and th those that walking part kind of implies this progression <laughs> That right, but that's just so boxy, and it just doesn't have that that richness that comes from letting that D ring out. Okay, so that's what's going on with the rhythm. Then um, I got something really a little program here for you uh, today, and I'm going to kind of get right to it. Um, I'll just mention real quickly that minor and major pentatonics for D work great with this progression okay and a lot of what you saw in that intro was using that those scales um and also d mixolydian okay the flatted seventh in that d mixolydian is the is a c natural so you gotta that sound okay we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about the mixolydian aspect of it today um, but we've done a lot of videos that on this channel and there's a lot of other good ones out there that you can, you can hunt some of that stuff down. Um, just recently we've done several, uh, on Mixolydian. So whatever you've got going on, you're going to be able to improvise over this. So just hang in there a second. But what, what was really going on in that intro was I was trying to, um, kind of, do some, you know, not get going too fast and stuff on some of it. Um, and really do sort of a systemized approach to chord tone targeting. And it was real subtle. It wasn't something where I was doing all these licks that, that featured all of these, you know, wild, you know, targeting all these notes in one lick. It was like phrases that lasted for eight or 16 measures several times or a few times around the progression where I would really use the root D, D note, the root of the D chord as the um, center or the beginning and the ending points of the licks. And then I would switch to using the third as the kind of home base for it. And then the fifth it wasn't very noticeable probably just watching it, but if you go back and watch it, now that I've said that, hopefully that will stand out to you. So it's sort of like this. I'll just play some kind of uh, a simple material, but, but demonstrating what I just said about those target tones. And then we'll talk about what they are. And that's just that D root. Okay, 
So, you know, really slowed down, and, and not just slowed down, but just kind of, you know, really, I'm, I'm really just keeping, keeping myself on task there, right? So, but that's the way to do it at first, right? Just, just so you, you know, make it go out of your way to really feature that third several times around. Then go out of your way to really feature that fifth, right? Then let yourself go and uh, just kind of let that muscle memory take over and see how it all fits into things that you're already doing with your pentatonics and stuff, right? So a good place to do that, especially if, with respect to the minor pentatonic on the 10th fret, is right there. And if we get a triad, which is how we locate the root, the third, and the fifth, okay, we get... Okay, so that's D, there's the root. I'm sorry. <laughs> root, uh, root two, three. <laughs> so the, what I played made sense. What I said did not. You can just count up that mixolydian scale. Uh, to the third. It's F sharp. And then the fifth. One, two, three, four. Is A. Okay? Don't get discouraged if you're not used to naming all your notes and kind of always knowing what note you're. You can do it just by shape memorization. It's that sound of a triad. It's those, those, those three strings of that kind of regular bar chord up there. Okay, that's all you really have to know to do this exercise, to do this program, right? And then, um, you know, uh, uh, try to put those those notes in in sequence somewhere. That that D mixolydian. There's a lot of components there. I just mentioned several things that are all important parts of playing guitar, but you don't know them all all at once. That's okay. But once this stuff, this approach will help, you know, all that stuff start coming together and coming into view in a way that, that makes relational sense, right? Not just, well, I did the caged method, then I did the this method, then I did the... Those are all great, um, but it's all got to be integrated, right? It's just different ways of sneaking up on the same herd of cattle, basically, right? So, one more little demonstration of this, and then I'll kind of let myself go a little bit at the end, and that's what I want you to do, right? Root, 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 bass stuff, third, 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 bass stuff. Fifth, fifth, and then just kind of have fun after that, right? Let me know how this works out for you, okay? I'll talk to you next time.